welcome to another installment of Imagine You Storytime. My name's Alvin, and I am a Master's of Directing candidate at Northwestern University. And I'm also a Theater for Young Audiences artist, or TYA artist. So today, I've been asked to tell you all a story. Now, I live in Honolulu, Hawaii, a tiny island chain in the middle of the Pacific. And here in Hawaii, we have a lot of different cultures telling a lot of different stories. So I thought, what kind of story should I tell today? And I decided on a Japanese story. This is a story called Kasako Jizo, or translated into English, Straw Hat Statues. Now I asked myself, how am I going to tell this story? And I decided to use a traditional Japanese theater form called Kami Shibai. Now, Kami means paper, and Shibai means drama. So Kami Shibai. Want to say it with me? One, two, three. Kami Shibai. Paper drama. Very good. Now, I'm going to need a little help to tell this story. Can't do it by myself. So, my partner, Serena, is going to help me by doing a couple of little voices. Come say hi. Hello. She's also my camera person. Super important. So, are you all ready? This is a story of the straw hat statues. Kasako Jizo. Mukashi mukashi, aru tokoro ni. A long, long time ago, in the islands of Japan, there lived an old hat maker and his wife. One wintry New Year's Eve, they sat in their bare little house. <sighs> It sure would be nice to celebrate the New Year with some hot rice balls, the old man said. His wife went to check the cupboard, but. Alema! There's barely enough rice to make half a rice ball! Then the old man had an idea. <gasps> I know! Let's make straw hats! I can sell them in town! And so. The old man and the old woman got hard to work weaving straw hats. They worked for hours and hours until finally, bring, they made five straw hats. All right, Grandma. I'm off to town. Be back before sundown. Kiyotsukete. Take care. And the old man set off on his journey through the snow. On his way into town, <coughs> ooh. The old man came across five Buddhist statues standing in the snow. Oh, they look so cold and lonely. No one must be taking care of these poor statues. Hmm, I'll just tidy them up a bit. The old man <clears throat> brushed the snow off each statue's head. <clears throat> Uh, get off that snow. <laughs> the newly cleaned statues seemed to smile with content, and the old man continued making his way into town. In town, many people were bustling about, buying food for a New Year's feast. Straw hats for sale! Get your straw hats here! Straw hats for sale! Straw hats for sale! 
after hours and hours. The people. Began to leave, and the shops closed. Oh, I didn't manage to sell a single hat. <sighs> the old man had no choice but to head back home. <laughs> On the way home, <laughs> The old man once again came across the five Buddhist statues, accumulating snow on their heads. Oh, they look so naked in the white snow. <gasps> I know! The old man gave each of his straw hats to the statues. Ichi, Ni, Shan, Shi. Go! Then the old man said a prayer. Namu Abhinabutsu, Namu Abhinabutsu, thanking heaven for another year of life and headed back home. When the old man reached home, it was way past sundown. So worried. The old man told his wife how he hadn't managed to sell a single straw hat and how he had given them to the Buddhist statues. Mm, you did a good deed, Grandpa. I know it will be a good year. Mm. The old man and the old woman went to bed. The next morning, when the old man went to check the snowfall, he found five straw hats outside his door. When he picked up each hat, he found <gasps> Whoa, carrots, <gasps> Whoa, apples, <gasps> Whoa, mushrooms, oh, my fish. and best of all, Rice! The old man and old woman thanked the heavens for this feast and went inside as five pairs of footprints receded into the snow. The end. Thank you for having me, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed the story of the straw hat statues. Now that we're done, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek as to how I made the things I made to tell the story. So, this is my grandpa puppet. And if you look closely, I'm gonna turn it around. It's just a piece of paper. And taped to it is a big skewer, a wooden skewer that you use for barbecues. What I did was I copied a picture from the book, printed it out, cut it out, taped it, and there it is. My grandpa puppet. Here's another grandpa puppet that I made. <clears throat> Same thing, cut it out a picture from the book, tape the wooden skewer to it, and then I traced the same picture and colored it in. And then at the bottom, I stapled it together. So now he can flip around. Hey, ho, hey, ho. You can even like turn it super fast. <laughs> and here, is one of the cards that I used to tell the story. Remember when the old man is like, bye, I'll see you later. And how did I make his footsteps in the snow? Well, what I did was I made little slits inside and covered it with white pieces of paper. And if you look closely, there are little pieces of tape holding the pieces of paper together so that they don't slip and slide. But the pieces of tape are so small that when I pull just a little bit, comes off and it reveals his footprints. Try it again. There we go. And the third one. And that's how I did it. What I used was a little X-Acto knife right here, here, and here to make the slits in the paper. 
Now, you want to be careful and maybe ask your mom and dad to help you make with these cuts. And also, don't do it right on the table. Make sure you have something underneath so that you don't uh, tear up the wood on, on your surface that you're carving. So anyway, that's how we did it. So, I encourage you, make your own kamishibai with another story, any story. You could do it with the three little pigs or Jack and the Beanstalk. That would be super cool. Give it a shot and I'll see you next time. Bye.